Uh, thanks very much, um, Carr here again, uh, Minister. Can I say that I, I was really uplifted by your remarks and by, and by your contribution to the debate. And uh, as has been said, often debates in this house can, can be, you know, can be quite negative, and uh, and a lot of points can be scored. But I think your own contribution has uh, challenged us all to to point to positives. Um, and we can point to a lot of negatives, uh, and we have to do that. We have to point to challenges. Um, but only uh, two weeks ago, uh, I brought my uh, four-year-old daughter into the pride shop, uh, and we decked her out. We got her a, a flag and a, and a T-shirt and, uh, for the pride march on Saturday. And I was reflecting on the fact that that just would have been absolutely impossible uh, when I was her age. And just like Deputy Function, I don't consider myself to be that old, but when we do engage with our children, we realise how old we are. And when I, was, when I was her age, only a few years later, Declan Flynn was murdered in Fairview Park 40 years ago. Um, and a homosexual act, as it was then called, was a, was a criminal offence. And we only decriminalised homosexuality um, in 1993. We had a dedication on Sunday to Mervyn Taylor, who was uh, a bastion, if you like, in these houses of equality rights, including LGBT plus rights. Um, so I'm thinking of her, and I also think of young people, as has been described before. I often observe young people as they walk together, who are, who are walking in a, together in a very different Ireland than the type of uh, teenage walking that I used to do, where one of their party or two of their party will be uh, uh, from, you know, their, their background maybe from a different country, and they are, you know, celebrating that and they are engaged in that much more so than the very dull, white, pasty Ireland that I grew up in. And one of their number or two of their number maybe from the LGBT, LGBT plus community, and that is what they know to be right and normal and, and celebrated, and they are ready to defend those rights. And that is something that I find so refreshing of that generation who have handed this to us, who have handed this to us and are handing this to my child. And that whatever happens to my child and who she may be or who she may love will be defended by these young people. And more so perhaps than my generation, who did grow up in the schoolroom of homophobic jokes uh, and in a system that uh, was quite oppressive and in Ireland that was uh, quite oppressive. And then we see across Europe, as you said yourself, Minister, Russia, Hungary, Poland, the United States, individual states and what they're trying to do to, uh, uh, to, uh, you know, um, to books and to, uh, and to statements and to legislation in different states of America. We see uh, troubling conversations happening in the UK, and then we see it here in this country. And I think we all have to take note of the fact that, as you said yourself, Minister, debating somebody's uh, existence well, that isn't up for uh, debate. And punching down on a community who, who suffer higher levels of uh, mental health or suicide just isn't good enough. And I think this month uh, we have an opportunity uh, to call that out. Because being a member of the LGBT community, it is different than other inequalities. Because if you're a member of the travelling community, you share that burden with your family. And you can go home to the bosom of your family and you can discuss or share that inequality or discrimination that you have suffered. And you, and you can, I suppose, plough through life together. If you're a member of a, of a minority group, a, a migrant group, you can share that burden uh, maybe sometimes with your family. Um, but if you're a member of the LGBT community, this is sometimes a very, very private, a very, very private uh, discomfort, a very, very private hell. And the worst thing that you can do possibly in your own mind is to be honest about who you are uh, to your own family. I mean, imagine the fear of rejection from your own family. That is a fear that I, ha I can't even contemplate. That you would be who you are to your own family and be rejected by your own family. I think sometimes we have to reflect on how big a fear that is. Again, today for, for Irish young people. But it is Irish young people who are, who are who are dispelling that, who are challenging that, who are fighting uh, back uh, against that. Minister, you, you, you referenced the, um, the hate legislation, which is, which is, which is uh, coming down the tracks, and, and I greatly appreciate that, because that is something that we have been campaigning for uh, for quite a long time. And it is different when you see what's happened in Sligo, that there is a marked difference between, uh, uh, as you will know, a, a hate 
based, hate-motivated crime uh, uh, and other crimes. My colleague Jed Nash asked me to, uh, to impress on you the need of a commitment from the Department of Justice and when they'll start public consultation on dispensing of convictions of men who were prosecu prosecuted pre-1993, uh, because that was the second element of the Labour Party 2017 legislation, which led to the state apology uh, marking the 25th uh, anniversary. Uh, of uh, de uh, decriminalisation. I'll say this much about, about the education system, uh, Minister, and I know people across these houses will, will agree with me. This is one of our biggest challenges. One of our biggest challenges is, is the elephant in the room about the dominance of the influence of, of, of entities who are hostile to this agenda. And we can't pretend that that doesn't exist. We can't pretend that our education system is still not dominated, dominated by the influence of patron bodies who are hostile to this agenda. Now, within the school system, there are absolutely schools who stand on their own two feet, who will, who will um, you know, promote uh, Pride Month, who will speak about LGBT rights, who wants to stamp out homophobic and biphobic and transphobic bullying. But we're going to have to come to a pinch point in the advancements of our republic and the advancements of our democracy, that it isn't sustainable for us to have 90% of the primary schools of this country uh, under the patronage of bodies that are hostile to the agenda of which we all agree with in this House. So how can you have a scenario when all the parties in this Dole, which are directly elected by the people, all the individuals uh, in this Dole, I believe, are uh, in concert with this agenda. The people of the country amending the constitution by themselves in 2015 uh, in order to afford equal rights, equal marriage rights, uh, and each equal constitutional protection uh, to families. And yet we still allow a scenario to persist where so many of our schools and so many of our minds can be influenced uh, by patron bodies who are hostile, hostile to this agenda. And it's not just about Pride Month, it's about every day of, a, of the life of a young LGBT person. And if you're attending that school, we're going to have to deal with that, uh, with that scenario. I was involved in the, uh, in the amendment of uh, 37, uh, to, uh, of section of the Employment Equality Act, uh, section 38. Uh, which was that the uh, employment rights of an employee in a state-funded institution um, you know, had to be protected, even if they were perceived to, have undermined it, uh, to be undermining uh, the ethos of the school uh, or, the, or, or, the, med or the, you know, the health uh, institution. And we couldn't delete that section of the Employment Equality Act because, constitutionally, the patron body still had the right to uphold its, its ethos. So those who were LGBT, uh, those uh, who were unmarried parents, those who were uh, divorced, their, ver their very existence, if you like, their very way that they were living their lives, um, you know, was being undermined at the fact that there were teachers. We had a situation um, only a number of years ago where the INTO LGBT group stood in the photograph or were asked to stand in the photograph in Orson Uchtron with Michael D. Higgins. And, and uh, a Carhelic, what happened was that half of the teachers left the photograph because they didn't want to be photographed and clearly identifiable as being LGBT because they could not be fully convinced or secure that their employment prospects would not be inhibited by the fact that they're in a photograph with the president of this country advocating for the rights of LGBT teachers. Now, that is a climate of fear. That's a climate of fear. Now, while we amended uh, the section of the Employment Equality Act, we have to go much further. But let me not finish on, on, a, on a note of, of negativity. Uh, let, me, let me finish on, on a, note of, a note of love. I mean, it's, I, I was greatly taken by the, the contribution of, uh, of Deputy Kenny, and he sp speaks of, 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 of our collective um, humanity. And I think what really connects us as human beings is this search for love. Uh, and their need for love. And some people find it, some people don't find it. Um, but if you do find it, and you do get to express it, well, it is the most wondrous thing. And pride is all about love. Uh, and, I, and I said earlier, I can't wait 
uh, to bring my, my little four-year-old uh, to the Pride March on Saturday and for it to be the most normal thing in the world. And I can't wait for her, me to explain to her what it's all about. Thank you, Deb.